The Zerbi Air sedan was conceived as a light transport aircraft and was built in 1919. It used four equal sized staggered close coupled wings, a surplus World War I engine and first attempted to take the sky in 1921. Things didn't go well. However, Avis think it's worth building a kit of it and I will agree with them. Why don't we have a look at what we get in the box of the kit of the Zerbi Air Sedan, right here on Gary's Stuff. Hi there, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. Today is box opening day on the kit of the week and that kit is, of course, the Zerbi Air Sedan in 148 scale from Avis. Now, if you're thinking about buying one of these, this is very much a video for you because you'll see what you get for your money. Later in the week, there will be a context video telling you more about the Zerbi Air Sedan and indeed multiplanes of its era in general. And of course, towards the end of the week, there will be a video on how to build this very kit. How we you know when these videos pop up? Best thing to do is to make sure you have subscribed to the channel and you've hit that notification bell. You'll get a notification every time I upload a new video. And of course, anything you see on my channel that you like, please give it the imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. And if you want to offer a bit more concrete support, you can do that through Super Thanks by becoming a channel member or indeed by using any of my online partner programs. The kit I am building this week was very kindly donated by Nick Johnson as a mystery box. So Nick, thank you very much, my friend. Let's make a start then and see what you get inside the box of the Zerbi Air Sedan in 148th scale from Avis. So here's the box of the Zerbi Air Sedan made by Avis. Rather nice piece of artwork on the front here. It's um, based on a photograph of the Times, another photo here. These are pretty much the two existing images of the Air Sedan at all. So fairly restricted amount of research material available for this, I would say. But still, a nice looking box. On the side, there are some of the other kits in this range. I mean, that annular wing is amazing. Scour car, the Yak-20 and the... Very chubby Bristol racer there. Uh, sides are pretty much this, as usual, uh, English and Russian. But, and yeah, at the end, again, a reprise of the artwork. Apparently only 500 pieces of this are being made, which says short run kits, maybe slightly lower pressure molding or maybe even silicone molding. Or, or if it is metal, it's, it's not going to be um, a fantastic metal mould because to only do 500 pieces of metal moulds probably prohibitive. So I'm guessing a silicone mould. Anyway, let's check out what's inside. A bag with everything in it. I'll have a quick look at that in a bit. And of course, the instruction sheet. An instruction sheet with a brief history of the aircraft do you know what there the really isn't actually all that much more than this known about the aircraft um the decals photo etch um on the inside all these bits and pieces we'll have a look at that in a bit more detail and then the parts bag as well so let's have a look at what you get in there so this is sprue a it's essentially the two fuselage halves, parts of the engine, engine cowling, propeller, and tailplane, and a few other bits and pieces. Sprue B uh, consists of the top and bottom of the fuselage, the fuselage, the floor piece, um, some seats, and uh, a few more struts, and the front window area as well. For the pilot to look out because he actually sits directly behind the engine which is quite bizarre there's the seat locations there this is frame c um these are actually the rudder bars um parts of the engine um yeah 
random bits and pieces. I'm not entirely sure what they are. There's a lot of bits of things sticking together and poking out on this thing. It was a bit, um, the structural design was less than optimized, let's say. Now we have the four wings um, on both of these are called frame D, although there's no identifiers on them. Um, the bottom parts of the wings have all of the uh, connection points for the many, many struts. It does, I don't know whether it's true or not, but it does look to me like these are molded really closely together because they've got these these connection marks, which, you know, had, had it, I don't understand why you wouldn't just have that connect you know the whole thing and with the feeds and just let the people at home take them off unless they were i can't see them doing that i mean sensibly they'd be sort of shaped like this um but anyway um whether that's how it is or not that's they, they've trimmed off either trimmed off this part of the frame um for you which risks n putting nicks into the front edge the leading edges which i don't think they have or they're made like that and then just sort of snapped apart of the factory again. I can't see that happening. It's a bit of a mystery, that one. Anyway, they look okay. The flow lines that you can see in the plastic are okay. They're, they're, you know, it's, 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 there's nothing major there. There's no gaping holes. There's a bit of a scratch there that needs to come out. But otherwise, they look fairly well molded. Okay, this is frame F. And... I don't know why they've gone for a different color plastic. I'm assuming it's a big assumption to make, but I'm assuming this is a different formulation for some reason. I don't know if it's maybe a bit softer because they are structural things and you don't, you know, when you want to take these off, you don't want to snap them, maybe a tiny bit softer for that. I don't know. There's, there's quite a lot of flash on them. Anyway. This is the first of the sort of the strut system to hold all the four wings in place. And frame G is the other set of struts. You can see there's a lot there to hold these wings together. I must say I'm not really surprised it failed on its first flight. The transparent parts here come on something called frame E. Um, you have the side windows, you have a door, you have this strange sort of ankle or shin level window that I think the pilot was allegedly supposed to look through. Interesting thing on here are that the wheels are made here on the transparent frame. And I'll show you why that is in a moment. Okay, so here we have the sheet of photo etch and you can see it's basically a load of spokes and what these are are the spokes for these wheels now um because that they were just spoked wheels and to give that effect they've made the wheels in a clear plastic and then you put these on top and paint the actual tires um i don't know how well that's going to look um i suspect it'll look better if we matte do a matte coat on the on the plastic later but anyway we'll see how that that fits in it, it looks that could be fun it could be okay and then the decal sheet well, i say sheet i think there's two on mate i don't know if that's a, a decal there the zerbi there but essentially there's one of these big things for each side of the aircraft they're printed nicely they're printed sharply in black but you know they're not going to be it's not gonna make that much difference, I don't think, how terribly cartographed they are. They look they look fine, they look great for this scale and for this use, I'm sure. And then finally, the instruction sheet. Um, as it says here, decals for one version. There was only one ever built, so it would be. Photo etch sheet here. The layout of the different frames here, just in case you need to look for a part. And then the actual instructions, it is pretty much um, an exploded view sort of thing rather than a, an actual instruction. So, you know, there you've got the cylinders and these feeds and exhausts and the shroud and the propeller and, and a, an axle. 
the implications, you just shove them all together. Obviously, um, if you have a lot of time and money and graphic uh, graphics to hand, you would actually be doing this. this would, for ethics, this would be about four steps right here. But anyway, and there'd be some arrows. Everything that's fairly straightforward, though, um, all these bits go inside, the bits on the bottom. Um, yeah, you can see here the pilot sits right behind the engine. And it's just this little sort of ankle or knee level window they look through. It's quite bizarre. The thing that's not immediately clear in this system is how the wings kind of go together. So I'm, I'm assuming you put the four wings together on this one pair of frames, put this on the top of the fuselage and these bits on the fuselage. And then put this onto that, but then also add another level of, I think this is probably one part on each side, to, to hold it all together. I think that's going to be the, the main issue on this build, is getting these wings anywhere near correct. But then it was on the real aeroplane. This sort of rudimentary rudder that's going to have absolutely no use whatsoever um, on a real aircraft goes on as well. And then the colour scheme at the back basically is cream with black, bits of natural wood and rubber for the tyres. Um, and here you can see how absurdly short these wings are. I mean, that's, to have any kind of directional or roll control over that, they would need to be twice the length of that. That is quite insane. But hey, there we go. It's No one was killed. No one was hurt in the accident. So... At least that's something. There we are then. By necessity, not an enormously complicated kit, even though it's 148 scale, because I think there's only like two or three images of the air sedan that still exist. I don't believe there are any drawings anywhere. There's a lot of descriptions. But otherwise, you know, we really don't know what the thing looked like. So the uh, kit makers have to make assumptions and... You know, there's only so far you can go with that. You can't sort of super detail something once you don't know what the detail was in the first place. Although there are relatively few parts, um, there's quite a lot of complicated assembly to be done, I suspect. But we'll find out more about that in the build video, which of course comes later in the week, as does a video to put the plane into some sort of historical context with a look at multiplanes in general. Both of those will be on our channel very soon. If you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell and you'll be notified when these videos and other videos are published on my channel. And of course, anything you like, please do remember, give it the imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. In any case, thank you so very much for watching today. Hope to see you again very soon. Take care and goodbye.